Oh, the wait should be worth it. About an hour and 14 minutes due to weather, but we are set for our All-American pitchers matchup of Kelly Maxwell and Kat Sandercock opening night here at the Women's College World Series. Beth Mowens along with Jessica Mendoza, Michelle Smith in the booth. We've got Holly Rowe down on the field with us. The significance, of course, of winning your opening game in this double elimination format, guys. 90% of the national champs won their first game here. Well, and I think it's so important because you get a day off when you win, so you can literally throw your ace every game of this Women's College World Series in the new format. Now, I do have to say, though, both Florida State and Oklahoma have won the World Series having lost that first game. So it is possible to be done. I think it's all about scoring first. I mean, we saw it in the first two games. Like, you score first, you win games. And when you look at day one, that matters. We talked about the nerves and adrenaline. So if you can be the one, we have a pitching matchup right now. If you can be the first one to score, that's who I believe is going to win tonight. All right, we are set. First pitch is just a moment away as we check out our Capital One starting lineup. And we will start out with the visitors, the six seed, Oklahoma State, getting set to take on the three seed, Florida State. Becker was be their best hitter all season long in that top spot, and Kyla Naomi has really come alive. Look at that batting average in the NCAA tournament, 529 with three home runs and 11 runs batted in in their five wins as we send it down to Holly Rowe. Well, for Oklahoma State, it's been a bit of a roller coaster this season. They had a stretch late in the season where they went two for 11. Kenny Gajewski said, I don't know what was going on. I think there was a lot of pressure for our kids so they could keep that top eight national seed and host all the way through. He said, listen, whatever happens in the selection show, you've earned it. And when they heard their name called, it was something pretty special. This reaction during the selection show, there was a big breath of relief. Excitement. They set a reset button. And Kenny Gaiesi said, I don't know what it is, but we're playing our best softball. The reset has worked. The pressure is off. They're playing loose and free. And Oklahoma State, that roller coaster, no more. They are steady Eddie right now here at the World Series. Yeah, he had to remind his team just how good they had been the first half of the season. And that has... Now come together in the postseason, their fourth consecutive time here at the World Series. Oh, by the way, the first half of the season included winning two of three head-to-head -head in Stillwater in a non-conference showdown with Florida State. So these two teams familiar with one another. You've got to be this way so I can see. And Lonnie Alameda, the head coach for the Florida State Seminoles, five times to this Women's College World Series in the last nine years. Lonnie, a newly christened softball Hall of Famer. And of course, the highlight, that 2018 National Championship. They also played for the title again in 2021, falling in the championship series to Oklahoma. And there is a look at Kat Sandercock, 26 and three on the season, guys. That's the best record of any pitcher here at the Women's College World Series. And how about this? Her last loss in March to guess who? <laughs> Oklahoma State. She is 15-0 in her 20 starts since that series. And in fact, a previous loss to Alabama, her only loss this year as a starter. That Oklahoma State defeat came in relief. Well, Catherine Sandercock is so good because she moves the ball around the zone. She can go down, she can go up. She has a great mix of speeds. And when you look at her composure, her ability to throw pitches on the edges, under pressure, day in and day out is what makes her so great. She's not going to throw a lot of strikeouts, 107 on the year. She's going to roll a lot of ground balls and use that really strong defense behind her. Oh, and so much trust that she has in that defense behind her. And honestly, the experience that she's had. I mean, that's that's the thing that you see with Kat Sandercock is she didn't get the same innings pitched throughout the regular season. So she is well rested right now. And she's also grown a lot. I and mean, you talked about her last lot was coming in relief. She's been a closer. She's been an opener. She's done it all. And she's prepared her for this stage. And you talk about full circle. We mentioned the trip to the finals in 2021. Guess who they eliminated on the way? Kelly Maxwell and Oklahoma State. <laughs> ah, they meet again, again tonight. And there is Rachel Becker, one of the 
biggest finds out of the transfer portal, perhaps the biggest surprise in the country with what she has done at the plate coming over from Purdue to Oklahoma State. Yeah, I mean, Kenny Gajewski knew she was going to be good, but to see her be top seven in the country, batting average, her on base, her being that spark plug at the top of this lineup in all of the categories. I mean, she's been that hitter for them. And as much as she knew, he knew that she was great, She's been even better than I think she thought. Well, it's impressive. 79 hits on the year, but I love the 45 walks. She knows she can pass the bat by taking that walk, and she's got some good boppers behind her. Second team All-American, and we are finally set to go after about an hour, 15-minute delay due to lightning in the area early this evening. Trying to join Oklahoma and Tennessee as opening day winners here at the 41st Women's College World Series. Right. And Kat Sandercock first pitch clips the inside corner 0-1. Academy de Leon, the first pitch showing why that you know, she's precision right there on the corner. Not going to see the ball over the white of the plate very often. When you do, you got to capitalize on it. Fouled out of play by Becker. Out of Lindenhurst, Illinois. She was telling us this week she actually recruited Oklahoma State. She had been watching them the last several years at the World Series. She liked the way they played. And she reached out to Kenny Gajewski. And the Pokes brought her aboard. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. And Kat Sandercock, who does not rely a whole lot, Smitty, on strikeouts, will open up the night with one. Well, and she pitches Becker all inside. She throws a drop inside. She throws a rise ball and then comes back for the strikeout pitch. Three pitches for the strikeout. A great drop ball. And look at her heat map. This is a swing and miss. So she will use that rise ball. She'll elevate on the inside corners, the righties, outside the lefties. But it's that last pitch that she struck Becker out on. That drop ball low and inside the lefties is just money. It'll bring up Cheyenne Factor, the center fielder. Hey after they reach the national semifinals and then drop two in a row to Texas. They, they had a lot of folks graduate. Cheyenne, one of just three returning starters. So a credit really to this year's group of cowgirls to take this roller coaster ride and make it all the way back. Jamder. Fearless going inside. That is the key to me here in Oklahoma City. I know we've talked about adrenaline, but as a hitter, when you have that adrenaline, your bat is slower. And you're always told, relax, relax your hands. It's impossible here. And what pitchers can do is they attack those hands. You're going to invite Smitty to get into Sandy Koufax exactly. right out of the gate here. First <laughs> inning. Go ahead, Smitty. Boom, bubble off my head. Sandy Koufax, <laughs> one of his best quotes. Show me a pitcher that can't throw inside, and I'll show you a loser. Yeah. You know, you've got to own that inside corner. Already a pair of 0-2 counts to open up the ball game. Sandy Koufax kids, one of the great Dodger pitchers in history. You'll see uh, L.A. and uh, the Yankees on Sunday Night Baseball this week. One-two pitch from Kat Sandercock. Slow roller to second. Devin Flaherty is there. The scoop to first. Two down. Devin is one of 11 Florida State players that have World Series experience. They were here a couple years ago in the finals. And then the bitter disappointment. As a two seed last year, they lost at home in the regionals. So that has been motivation for Lonnie's team for the last 12 months. And this is the one that they really have to be concerned with in this lineup, Kylie Naomi. She really is below the pulse of this Oklahoma State team. And when they were struggling on that 2 and 11 clip, you know, she struggled with the bat defensively and has really turned things around. She's had a great postseason so far. 529, three home runs. 
And that's just the last two weeks. If we had a most improved award in the country, she'd be one of the finalists for it. 11 RBI in the last uh, five games during this tournament run. She's really proven to be the engine. Well, and even last year to this year, I mean, she really struggled last year, has turned things around. Just a great leader on the field with the bat. One one pitch gets the swing and miss. Here you see Naomi when they were losing 11 of 13, she was hitting 231, and now going 5 and 0 in the NCAA tournament with that 500 plus batting average and pop. Yeah, well, and I'm, not striking out. And the errors, the eight errors that oof, you know, that's a, a big part of it. Kat Sandercock gets two strikeouts. So much for but what the butterflies are all flying in the right direction, Smitty. Absolutely for Kat Sandercock. Two strikeouts in her first inning. Just thrown with great velocity, precision location. That drop ball on the inner half is just dirty. Two strikeouts for Kat Sandercock picking up the bats for the Knowles. Do you want me to take Max? Or is it Back here in Oklahoma City, opening night at the Women's College World Series and Florida State coming to the plate for the first time to face the All-American Kelly Maxwell. Oh, the lefty just has that amazing spin, just so much composure in the circle. So she will use a rise ball on both sides of the plate. She has an off-speed curve ball. And She's just dynamic in every way coming from that left side. One of the best swing and miss pitchers in the entire game because she controls the zone. She moves it through the zone. She's got spin, she's got speed, and she has spots, locations. She is all about the whiff with those 223 strikeouts on the season. One of just a handful of pitchers to cross that mark. And she also has World Series experience. Two and two here a year ago in helping them reach the semis as the Big 12 had three of the final four last year. Our Capital One starting lineup for the Seminoles, ACC champions for the eighth time in the last nine years. And uh, they are all about uh, making some noise on the base paths, starts right at the top, and Kaylee Harding in the NCAA tournament hitting 400 with six runs batted in. Right. And it begins with Kaylee Mudge, who's also hitting close to 400 in this postseason. Senior out of Winter Springs, Florida. Right. Kaylee didn't play a whole lot during the regular season as a freshman, and then the window of opportunity opened late in the year, and she jumped through it. 
was a member of the All Women's College World Series team here with a then record 14 hits, including five in one game. She was on fire. And we were like, wait, she didn't, she didn't start the whole year. <laughs> She has grown into one of the top leadoff hitters in the game. And a swing and a miss for Maxwell. Kelly Maxwell just showing what movement looks like. You can see the way she starts that through the middle half of the zone, and that ball just has so much run, so much movement, that rotation on it. Her whiff rate, 38%. That's number one in the D1 rank. So average pitcher is going to be about 18%. So she is well above second in K per seven innings, just getting it done with that strikeout pitch. Kelly, so far in the NCAA tournament, righties hitting just a buck 43. The lefties are sub 100 at the plate against her. 2 0 oh so far in the tournament. This is Janai Kerr. Another one of those players, uh, ladies, who'd be up for most improved player of the year award. Hit 362 during the regular season. Trying to rediscover that swing here in the NCAA tournament. Has overcome both the pandemic and an ACL injury during her time in Tallahassee. There's quite a bit of time she was off the field. Because of both those things and working her way back in, getting used to being in, in game shape mentally, physically. Yeah, look at that rise over 100 points yeah. batting average, uh, the OPS way up. We always talk about it, it's game speed. There's, you can practice, but playing in games so important to get up to that level. Boy, Maxwell had her fooled on that one. So after Sandercock starts out with a couple of strikeouts, Kelly Maxwell does also. Well, there's just so much variation in speed. This is that off-speed curveball that she throws so well. And for a left-handed hitter, it's hard to identify it. It's going away from you. It's dropping down in the zone, so it's getting further from your eyes. You think that you can hit it. You think you can barrel it up. And before you know it, your bat is missing it. Kaylee Harding. Too high. Junior out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. She is the player for Florida State that moved to the top of all the opponent's scouting reports this season. And it took some time to adjust to being the big dog in the batting order, but she is peaking at just the right moment. And is putting it together so far in the NCAA tournament. There's some pressure that comes with that, right, Smitty? And, oh, yeah. and it takes a bit, Jess, to embrace that accountability and responsibility for your team. Billy Jean King said it, you know, pressure is a privilege. You got to be able to handle it. You got to be, you know, comfortable in the moment, want to be in the moment, thrive when the lights are bright. None brighter than here. The 1-1 one -one pitch just missed. Well, where she's really developed mechanically, too, is, is the fact that she was always great on the inner half. She could always, she has great hands. She'd open up her hips, but where she's developed this year is also taking responsibility and owning the outer half, working on that constantly at practice, finding the weakness and making it better. Well, it's almost like she was looking for the outer half and chased a pitch out of the zone. And Kelly Maxwell, who went through a little bit of crisis of confidence during that rough stretch at the end of the season, that appears to be in the rear view mirror. She is locked in here in the first inning. What's the biggest difference is just attacking the strike zone. I mean, Kenny Gajewski talked about her nibbling and really trying to stay outside the zone. And, and when you lack confidence, that's what I always notice as a hitter or the pitcher, is when they're afraid to throw it, 
throw their pitches for a strike, come over the plate, trust their stuff. And Kelly Maxwell right now, she's trusting it. And she's going right at hitters. 3-2 pitch. And Harding draws the walk. So a two-out base runner for Florida State. It's a great job by Harding after swinging at a pitch that was out of the zone to really take a good look at the last two pitches. Balls earn that walk. That'll bring up the catcher, Michaela Edenfield. Gets a hold of one, and the outfielders won't even bother to head towards the wall. Two-run shot to put the Knowles in front. Talk about hunting for a pitch, looking middle away, and this actually ends up just middle and up. And Michaela Adamfield with the power, and Beth, you nailed it. I mean, not even a courtesy jog from the outfield because this was a shot. You look at the zone of this and her hunting. You see her eyes are actually looking away. It comes back over the middle part of the plate. No doubt about it. As soon as she makes contact with this, she kisses a goodbye. Literally took her mouth and said, get out of here. Second time this year that Edenfield has taken Maxwell deep. And a two-run shot here to open up the scoring. Well, when you ask Lonnie Alameda about Michaela, you know, the, the numbers aren't the greatest, but she says we're never taking her out of the lineup because one swing can change a game. And there's an example. She just has great ability to step up in big moments, and that's what you want. You want to be able to come through in that big moment when things are bright. Area 51. Love it. I, that think, I think that's where spot. it went. Well, it's a spot, too, in <laughs> Tallahassee that beyond the fence. Yep. Yep. And her number 51. She even had a, a super regional. She had like an alien painted over her yep. eye. <laughs> We're being told the uh, the eyewear is uh, stars and the moon, and that was definitely to the moon. Mm -hmm. On a rise ball. There you go. Devin Flaherty. Ball five. So after a couple of strikeouts, a walk, and a two-run home run. Remember, the Cowgirl pitchers through the first five games of the NCAA tournament had allowed three runs. And now the quick two spot for the Knowles. Well, Kaylee Harding was, I think, a huge at bat earning that walk in front of Enfield. Because Maxwell had her had her down. She was in front of her. She was one strike of getting out of this inning, of potentially striking out the side. Harding works the count. Enfield first pitch swinging. It's how quickly you can turn, right? How one pitch can change the game. Well, we talked about it at the top of the show. They are so good at drawing walks, one of the best in the country. Okay. And a swing and a miss there. So three strikeouts for Maxwell, but damage during. Kayla Edenfield, she's got the swag, she's got the confidence, and how about the pop? We always talk about pitcher's velocity. How about exit velocity, 80 miles an hour? Michaela Edenfield, no doubt about this one, put Florida State up two zip.
Well, Joanne Graff set the foundation, but Lonnie Alameda has gone to a next level. 13 seasons of 40 or more wins, 12 ACC champ appearances, and they have won nine of those ACC tournament titles. But more importantly, the first ACT team to win a national championship back in 2018. With all of that success, with that continuity, comes a ton of expectations when you put on a Seminole uniform. So Lonnie Alameda, one of the best culture coaches in the game, this year they have talked all about expectation versus execution. She said, if we live in the expectation world, the coach's expectation, your parents' expectation, social media expectation, you will drown. But we are going to focus on execution. How can you control your daily execution? How can you control your moment to moment and execute? That's the space that they want to be living in. And that kind of execution that we just saw in the first inning, that's execution versus expectation right there on one of the biggest stages in softball. Yeah, and Holly, it started on the very first day of practice with what she described as a debriefing of their loss last year in the regional at home as a two seed. And they were so disappointed that they weren't able to get back here. They sat down and watched the game. Tears were shed. And they felt those feelings again that they knew they didn't want to feel again this time around. And that's been a huge part of them getting back here. The focus on the execution. And a lot of those experienced players that are on this team said, oh, wow, wow, we're so blessed that we didn't end our careers that way. There obviously were some athletes that ended their career that way, but you know, presence of mind to know that they were going to use that as a springboard to get back here to Oklahoma City any yeah. way they could. Because that team lost the first game here in 2018 and were led back by Jesse Warren and Megan King and the likes. That was the year before this group of seniors led by Sandercock arrived on campus. And the breakdown 2018 to this year, well, they're approaching the wins total. They're actually scoring a bit more. They used a lot of arms during the season that year and then really relied heavily on Megan King once they got here. So it'll be interesting to see how Lonnie plays this out. Jess, you've been talking about it. We heard Danielle talking about it in the studio. How many arms will they use? And a miscue defensively gets Oklahoma State a base runner and the tying run to the plate. This is a jam job, and it just looks like the way that Harding comes over, it gets past her, and then Muffley has to pick it up. You can see it just tips off the glove, so it's a little bit of a misdirection. And she's saying, my bad, an accountability for it. Yeah, that'll be an E5 on Harding. We talk so much about Kat Sandercock, the fact she's going to a lot of ground balls, a lot of reliance on the defense. Ball Even though we've seen two strikeouts, we've actually seen more swing and miss early from her. But what she does best is rolls out ground balls. Here's Caitlin Carwile, the junior from Purcell, Oklahoma. 333 so far in the postseason for Caitlin. Too high. When Sandercock just continues to hammer the inner half on Oklahoma State. Well, you could hear Ron Burkhart as well saying too high. He's the home plate umpire tonight. Dustin Douglas at first, Mike Burwell at second, and Tracy Laycock at third. I love when umpires let you know where it's missing. Yeah, yeah. It's so important. You can make adjustments. And as a hitter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She brings that down as a strike, is what he's also saying. Yeah. Sandercock just on really good velocity. I mean, she typically lives in that like 67 to 68 miles an hour, but she's touching 70 here. Yeah. She's got that but with World the movement. Series juice. Yeah. Yes, with good movement. Strike. You know, a lot of times you throw through your spins when you yep. overthrow, right? You run out of real estate for that ball to move. When I saw her hit 70, I was like, uh-oh. Uh -huh. Like, she's just going to be throwing BBs. But you can see that late break she's getting on the drop. 
Well, that is the one good part about the drop is that you've got gravity, you know, working with you to pull that ball down. 2-2 to Carwile. Thanks that foul. We touched a little bit on uh, the reset button that Oklahoma State hit. There, there's a good little resort town here in Oklahoma, Broken Bow. And the team goes there before the start of each season to bond. They also have been going the last few years before the NCAA tournament to bond. And just to catch their breath and, and like Holly said about Florida State, to get away from all the noise and all the social media. Wow, Sandercock with another strikeout. That's three of them. One down. Watch how beautiful, too, the movement on this pitch is. And we've talked about the drop ball. You see right there just how she releases it. It bends underneath the bat. We've seen more swing and miss early in this game on the drop ball than we've seen in any regular season game from Kat Sandercock. Let's check in with Holly. Well, you guys said there's juice in that arm right now for Katherine Sandercock, and that's by design. Lonnie Alameda was very intentional at the beginning of this season. She sat down her ace and said, listen, we're going to use you a little bit differently this year. She wanted her fresh Ball one. for the postseason. She said, you're not going to have the same innings, and I know that's going to be hard to hear because you're going into your season, senior season. You want to be the ace. And Katherine was used in a different role. She came in relief at times. She used her in the middle of the lineup at times. She was the ace at times. And there were some hard moments for Katherine Sandercock. She was uncomfortable. She said, I was so out of my comfort zone at times. It was challenging. But the reason they did this is so that she could have juice in her legs and juice in her arms for the postseason. And that's what you're seeing in the circle so far tonight. Yeah, she almost has as many relief appearances as starts this year. They started using her to save games as well. Inside. It's the future. I mean, when you look at where teams are headed, and it's where Lonnie Almeida has done a good job in researching. And honestly, she watches a lot of baseball. She understands matchups and utilization of a pitcher versus a certain type of hitter. And when you've got seven on your staff, as she does, that throw a variety of different pitches, not only rests can't Saturn cock, but it also utilizes how great they can be. 2-0 to Morgan win. I thought it was pretty interesting too, guys. Not only do they look at spray charts for opposing teams' hitters and their own hitters, but spray charts for their pitching staff yeah. as well. All that information is so important, especially when you're calling the game. And that's what Lonnie Alameda does. She knows how to call a game. So we look at all these great pitchers, but sometimes we have to remember there are great pitch callers coming out of that dugout with all that information, all those analytics. They know where the holes are in your swing, so you better be prepared. 2-1 to win. Ball. Okay. Was able to hold up. 3-1 and one now the count. Yeah, she's the only player this year. 20 wins and 5 saves. She's got 9 saves total on the year. 26 victories. Nineteen and zero, as a matter of fact, since the loss to Oklahoma State in early March. Outside, and that missed away. Scoots away from Edenfield. Work will have to hold it second, but win now aboard, and the tying run is aboard, and the go-ahead is Talon Edwards at the plate. So an error and a walk in the inning. And that will precipitate a conversation. You saw Devin Flaherty taking charge. Uh, great leadership around this infield. They're all upperclassmen. And Flaherty's one that Lonnie singled out at the beginning of the season, said, hey, we need you out front. We need your voice as well as your bat and glove. And Devin has responded to that. She's been a great leader. Does a really good job up the middle with Josie Muffley. Those two 
So experienced. But here is the threat for Oklahoma State after the Florida State home run in the first. Edwards has been swinging a hot bat. The freshman from nearby Moore, Oklahoma. An early enrollee in Stillwater at the age of 17. Gave up her senior year to start her career a bit early. Careful going inside on her. Her bat to ball skills, quick hands. You saw it on the last pitch that she fouled off. We've seen a lot of swing and miss on that. Edwards can connect on it. And that's going to be the key for Oklahoma State is they need to only attack pitches in the zone. That rise ball, it looks so good, especially when you've been, you know, hunted on the inside. In other words, attacked on the inside by Sandercock. You see a pitch out, you think, oh, I can get extended on that. And sometimes you chase it and then you realize, oh, I just chased it above my head. <laughs> Edwards is two for four against Cat when they met up during the regular season. And a smile from the freshman. That wasn't her best swing. Well, it's that same pitch, but see the experience of Kat Sandercock. She brings it down a little bit, and she gets her to bite at it. Got her to chase that up and out of the zone. And she got a piece of it. <laughs> Which is impressive. Mm -hmm. You see where that pitch was? I mean, it was over her head. And that's the bat to ball skill they rave about with her. Look up where this pitch, watch her hands just barely get a piece. There's not many hitters that can get a piece of that rise ball that high. Staying alive. Work and win aboard. Popped her up, Muffley at short. Two down. Sandercock gets the non productive out. You can just tell the way Sandercock is thrown. She's Hitting that zone with BBs. It's not had anything squared up even close. Great look at the crowd tonight. And downtown off in the distance. Hall of Fame Stadium here in Oklahoma City. Here's Taylor Tuck in the eighth spot in the order. Grad student from Stillwater, who has taken over the catching duties this year. Started to work her way into that spot at the end of last season. Caught some at the World Series. Oh, and two. RBI on the year. A couple of big ones out there right now. Going to that power slap, try to get a better look at those pitches from Sandercock. Boy, they are just chasing pitches out of the zone. You, know, it's, you can just tell. Kat Sandercock right now is at a different level. She had the perfect game in regional. She was lights out against Georgia in the Supers. And look at this pitch. So the hitters are so full that this is starting below the knee, but they're still chasing it down into the dirt. With a record of 105 wins, 11 losses in her five-year career in Tallahassee. Left side, Mudge has the range and the glove. 
couple stranded, still 2-0 Florida State. Take a look at our bracket update brought to you by Enterprise. A couple of winners already today. Opening day here in Oklahoma City. Tennessee beating Bama 10-5. And Oklahoma over Stanford, two love. So Alabama, Stanford, winner go home tomorrow night on ESPN. The ABC game Saturday afternoon. Winner's bracket, Oklahoma, Tennessee. Florida State with the lead here over Oklahoma State. Still to come tonight, our finale. The Pac-12 showdown, Washington and Utah. As Mac Leonard steps in for Florida State. We just witnessed some of the memorable moments uh, through the regionals and the super regionals and more to make here in the coming days as you see Maxwell's numbers against the righties and lefties. That home run, Michaela Edenfield, a two run shot that might still be going. She hit it a long way. Oh. I think Kelly needs to develop some new pitches. I mean, once you get to this level, everybody knows you. They know what you throw. You've got to be like a chameleon as a pitcher. The longer you play in a league, and trust me, I played 16 years professionally in Japan. I had to change all the time <laughs> because I was constantly thrown against the same hitters. You have to do that as you get older and older in your collegiate career. Oh. You've got to develop new looks, new pauses in your you know, your pre-motion, just something to affect the timing of the hitter. That's Michelle Smith, folks, the two-time Olympic gold medalist. How many titles in Japan? Eight. For the Hall of Famer? Yeah, we the 16 years. So that's some good success Winner. over there. <laughs> Alongside Smitty and Jessica Mendoza and Holly Rowe tonight. If you lose your opening game here, your chances of winning the title diminish greatly. And that's why it's important to get out to a hot start. The pop up here, Mac Leonard, Michaela Works got it one down. Well, this week on Sunday Night Baseball, the series finale. Mendoza and me going head to head, Yankees and Dodgers. <laughs> 7 Eastern on ESPN. Coverage begins at 6 o'clock with baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. I've already won. 
<laughs> I grew up in New York. She from Los Angeles. And it gets spicy on Sunday. Oh. Spicy. <laughs> Here's Hallie Waycaser in the seventh spot in the lineup. Out of Centerton, Arkansas, she's been one of the emerging new names and new faces for Florida State this year. And as Maxwell gets another pop up, this time it's Becker, two down. I know she had the one mistake to Enfield, but I mean, Kelly Maxwell has, has done a really good job. Top of the zone. That's that's the problem with it. when you you are working high yeah. and it gets met. It's usually going out, but she has so much movement. <laughs> she just naturally has her her body weight slightly back, which is why she is more up in the zone, you know, again, trying to make changes to the direction of your body to manipulate the pitch is just so important as you develop as a pitcher. Outside. Well, we see too now, you know, the, the new age in college athletics where the portal is so critical, but we also see at the highest levels and here at the World Series, you need those pillars that have been around for the duration, and Maxwell wasn't the ace the first few years in Stillwater. Carrie Eberly was there, yep. Samantha Shaw was yep. there. She got her innings when she could. Last year, she was their go-to here at the World Series. You know, we see that with a lot of the Florida State players. You think of a Montana Fouts for Alabama. You think of some of those Oklahoma players that have been around for the full boat. Every team's got them that are here in Oklahoma City. And sometimes it means waiting your turn and seizing an opportunity. Yeah, and, and I think this year having Lexi Kilfoyle has absolutely helped Kelly Maxwell and Kyra Aycock, who is a really good freshman that Oklahoma State has. They've relied on her quite a bit. But last year, Kelly ran out of gas literally on that Sunday. Some, yeah, that Sunday, that semifinal Sunday when Texas beat them in a, a double dip to go on to the champ series, and she's been used a little bit differently this year. This is Katie Dack, the DP, in the eighth spot in the order. Katie transferred in from Texas A&M. Just arrived in January, the sophomore out of Parker, Colorado. One for seven so far in the tournament. Lonnie likes to use her in righty-lefty matchups. Four. In and out of the lineup, and she draws the walk here. So this is just how the last inning started. Two quick outs and then a walk. And then Edenfield stepped up and bashed one. This time it's Josie Muffley, who does not have the uh, similar home run swing. <laughs> it's a little different, but. She, is she knows how to pass the bat. Yeah. yeah. She is a tough out in that she night is. hole. She's like an instigator, you know. She's just tough to get out. She's always fouling off stuff. And just gritty. Has overcome injury after injury to stay in the batting order. Toughness is undeniable. She's a, a future firefighter. One oh glove by Megan Bloodworth at third side retired one left on two in the books two nothing Florida State and Kat Sandercock ready to go again. She doesn't usually strike a lot of folks out. Well, her M.O. has changed so far tonight with three of them through the first couple innings.
are currently monitoring the weather in the area. Please be aware of any future announcements regarding updated weather. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. Kat Sandercock typically will attack the entire zone, but she has been all on the inside corner. This drop ball, you can see the way she throws it to the righties, to the lefties, over the top rotation, late sharp break, really challenging Oklahoma State on that inner half and almost saying, see if you can barrel up this pitch on the inner half. I don't think you can. And so far, Oklahoma State has not. Two innings of work, the three strikeouts. And now it's Megan Bloodworth, and then back to the top of the order for the second time around. Michaela Edenfield, a two-run home run in the first inning for Florida State. The difference so far tonight. Double elimination format. In the bottom half of the bracket, the winner tonight would take on the winner of Washington and Utah. That game coming up next. The winners tonight have the day off tomorrow. They play on Saturday. The losers tonight have to come right back and play an elimination game tomorrow night. And the flare the opposite way, and Waycaser's got it. One down. Back to Rachel Becker, struck out on a drop ball in the first. Uh, now they are uh, pulling the players off the field, uh, apparently some weather in the area. So we had about an hour, 14 minute uh, weather delay before first pitch tonight. And we appear to be headed towards another delay here in the top of the third. Due to lightning in the area. Her mind very calm. She's been known to do some yoga during rain delays. Also stretch and really be mindful about how she's handling it. She has refined her warm up technique so she doesn't have to throw as many pitches to re warm up. That's something they've been working on all season. But for Oklahoma State guys, some breaking news. They are going to make a pitching change here. Coach Kenny Gajewski telling me, listen, we're down. We were getting hit a little bit. We're going to make a change and see if that can't change our mindset here to start this next part of this game. Okay, so it was the starter Kelly Maxwell through the first couple of innings. So when the defense goes back out there for the pokes, a different pitcher in the circle for them. Maxwell, two innings of work, uh, the home run ball. And then for Kat Sandercock, three strikeouts. And uh, Edenfield, who took it deep. The weather delay, an hour and 46 minutes. This is on top of a pregame weather delay of an hour and 14 minutes. So it is time to get back to softball. And a third spot in the winner's bracket. And it's Kat Sandercock to the top of the order and Rachel Becker. She struck out her first time up. Of course, the significance is you win this game late local time here. You do get the day off tomorrow. The loser has to come back and play tomorrow night, weather permitting. And the swing and the miss on the rise. Kat Sandercock uh, traditionally has been a ground ball pitcher, but she's opened up the first time through the batting order with three strikeouts. And three flyouts. Yeah. The one ground out, usually there's a ton. Well, she, these last couple of weeks, she has just been at a, another level. She has been well primed for this time of the year. And you talked about it earlier, Jess, about how Lani Alameda used the staff, used her differently, kind of at some times limited her inning so that in early June here, she would be at her best. Yeah, she was throwing uh, about a third of the innings in the regular season, but up over 55% of their innings so far in the postseason. They went five and one. They did suffer a loss uh, in the regionals to South Carolina. They had to win an elimination game. 
and then they took care of business in the Supers at home against Georgia when Sandercock pitched the perfect game. Of course, that was in the region final against South Carolina, and then they picked up the win over Georgia in the Supers. She's got another strikeout. That's number four. She gets Becker twice. Well, this one again going back underneath the hands, and this is a drop ball that she's just going to place on the inner half, and you can see that Edenfield kind of catches that out of the zone, and Rachel Becker is surprised by that call. You can see from the ump camp, it looks like it's in the river. But with two strikes, it's always important to try to protect. So she keeps the lead off off the bases for the second time. Here's Cheyenne Factor grounded out to second base her first time up. Cowgirls the sixth seed, the Seminoles the three seed in this year's tournament. I think most folks were in agreement. The two big surprises on Selection Sunday, Alabama with a five seed, Oklahoma State with a six seed. But neither team cared much about that. They got to stay home for the first two weekends, and they are both here. Based on the, according to the selection committee, the strength of their uh, non-conference games and their wins against some of uh, top ten. the top 10s and top 25s in the country. And that included a matchup of these two sides back in March in Stillwater, a three-game series. Pokes took two of those. Three-zero here to Factor. Sandercock had one walk prior to the weather delay. Strike. The thing I like too is both coaches didn't shy away from throwing all their pitchers. Regardless of the fact they might see each other again here yeah. in the postseason, they uh, they wanted to challenge their teams, get them ready. I mean, why else do you schedule a series like that yeah. in early March if you're not going to challenge your best? You don't want to hide anything. Well, yeah, and you come in. Both of them, Oklahoma State went to Tallahassee to Florida State last year. Mm -hmm. Florida State returns the favor this year. So the Oklahoma State Cowgirls really struggled late in the year. That included sweeps at the hands of both Texas and Oklahoma, but they have bounced back some really strong pitching so far through this NCAA tournament and a 5-0 record. A lot of it has to do with this batter right here, Kylie Naomi. How she goes, the team goes, and that's how it's been this season when she struggled heavily. You look at her numbers in the NCAA tournament, adding 503 home runs, the 11 RBI it's in five games, ridiculous. And coming into that, she had some of the worst numbers of the season along with the team. And she is now the tying run to the plate. Gosh, that pitch, the, the run that Kat Sandercott gets on that. Because we, we talk a lot about drop, and you just assume, obviously, that go, pitch goes down. But when you can get run going in on the hands of these right-handed batters. And, and that's a really a non-competitive pitch. That was way out of the zone, but she's still got Naomi to, to swing through it. That's when you know that your your stuff is filthy, when yes. they're not just swinging at stuff in the zone or around the zone, but well out of the zone. Ball inside low. I also see that as a swing of a hitter that knows that you're down to nothing and, and that pressure. You'll see those kind of swings from teams that are down, and especially when you're the best hitter. You're the one that feels like you have that pressure. And you tend to chase because you're like, I've got, I've got to do this. Yeah. Third team All-American this year is the grad student from Lafayette, Louisiana. Oh, 
point, just continuing to work underneath the hands. I mean, you can tell that Lonnie Alameda has really studied Oklahoma State and probably pitching a completely different way than when they met earlier in that three-game series and just really coming underneath the hands and using that inner half. Two, drilled out to center. Janai Kerr with the backhand. We have the base runner Cheyenne Factor all the way to third, and the tag is made by Flaherty on the throw-in. Excuse me, Muffley. No, that is Flaherty that got the tag to get the back base runner for the third out, and that will end the threat. Great defensive play. Janai Kerr with the throw in to Flaherty. The tag applied to Naomi. Naomi. Oof. And a tough tag. Wow. for Florida State in the first inning. And that is our score as we move to the bottom of the third. And after an hour and 46 minute weather delay, the starting pitcher for Oklahoma State, Kelly Maxwell, will not return to the circle and they will make the change as Holly Rowe reported just a few minutes ago. And it is the righty freshman from Noonan, Georgia, Kyra Acock, who will come on to throw her 13th relief appearance of the season in which she has allowed 14 earned runs. Those are the numbers on the year for Kyra, nine and two in uh, just shy of 100 innings. Yeah, she's been uh, really effective at times and she's been a freshman at times. And uh, when she limits the free passes, she attacks the lower half of the zone, throws a really heavy pitch. She can be effective. She can roll a lot of ground balls and this is a Oklahoma State pitching staff that has a ground out rate of 59%. That's fourth in Division One, so it rolls a lot of ground balls. So look for her to attack the lower half of the zone. But she will face the top of the order. So Smitty, kind of take us through what Kenny Gajewski, what kinds of thoughts, what kinds of decisions is he considering here? They don't go to Lexi Kilfoyle, who they've used as their other starter quite a bit with more experience here. Well, he probably thinks they're down. If they end up losing this game, they're going to need a full staff. They're going to need a lot of arms to, to try to get him through this tournament. And Mudge will Reese uh, to lead things off here in the third. Yeah. 
with the infield single. This is so much, too, just to read the defense. And honestly, it seemed like, like no one wanted this. I mean, she's swinging away, basically a swinging bunt. I thought she laid this down, because that's what it looked like. The defense, no one really yeah. seemed to want it. Yeah, Acock needs to come off the uh, mound a little bit more aggressive on that. All right, so here we go with Florida State, a team that loves to run. Mudge immediately first pitch, sliding in under the tag. Didn't even take a pitch. No. Oh, they're going to call her out for leaving the bag early. Oh, yeah, she's way off the base. And you can see immediately the umpire has his arm out. And that's a delayed dead ball. So, oh, yeah. Can't leave that base until the ball leaves the pitcher's hand. So Mudge. Erased. Means the count goes back to 0-0. Oh, oh. Ball. Did not swing at it. Janai. Struck out on the off-speed curve back in the first, facing Maxwell. So the first look for the Seminoles at Acock. Well, her front side was flying on her last at bat. So imagine that's exactly what they're going to do, throw her away, off-speed. She chased an off-speed pitch, of course, against Maxwell that was about a foot outside. So what do we think on the restart, ladies? Two base running errors, one for both sides, uh, being a bit overly aggressive. Yeah. You know, it's taught. You have all those emotions pent up. You've been waiting. You're, you know, you go, and then you have to wait again. It's easy to make some mental mistakes. But Janai Kerr, who's up right now, she did a great job of cutting that ball off. Mm -hmm. And it's all in front of you. That's why I was surprised yeah. by Kylie Naomi taking second. But I think she thought it was going to go to the wall. And Kerr did an awesome job in center field cutting it off. Yeah, and I also wonder if, you know, realizing that it was cut off, maybe she was assuming that the runner was going to come all the way around so the throw would go home. But you, you got to watch. Oh. Factor does have good speed, but she was being held at, at third just because, as you mentioned, Kerr was so good at getting to that ball. Two two to Kerr. <laughs> the thing with Janai Kerr, and I, I feel for her because her last at bat, I mentioned, you know, she struck out on a pitch way out, but she's a good bad ball hitter, and you can see it right now. I mean, she's got great hand eye coordination. She's able to foul off a lot of pitches that aren't in the zone. Sometimes when you know that, you expand the zone, knowing, hey, two strikes, I can hit anything. count. And draws the walk. That is the third free pass for Florida State. Well, those are those freshman moments I talked about. You know, she gets ahead of Kerr and then ends up losing her. You know, and that, that's just part of growth, maturity. And those things uh, take a little bit of time, take innings to, uh, to develop. Here's Kaylee Harding. There's a gapper, and that'll make its way all the way to the base of the wall. They will hold up Kerr at 
third base and the double for Harding out to left center. How about this for Kaylee Harding, her 22nd double on the season. This pitch, they wanted it more away. You can see where they were set up. It comes back over the middle of the plate, but the strength of Harding to be able to get around this, drive it quickly into the gap. That is her fifth double of the postseason. And two in scoring position for the number four hitter, Michaela Edenfield, who tattooed a two-run home run back in the first. And that double, 120th of the year, Florida State, the number one doubles team in the nation. They are great at going gap to gap. Oh, yeah, and they can hit it out, too, Michaela. You want to put her on here? Devin Flaherty's on deck. Uh, uh, you know, actually, and that's a great point, probably because batting averages in this situation are far higher than with the bases loaded. Um, and then, as you mentioned, then you're you're not pitching to four, Edville, you, you get, get four Flaherty. Outs, yeah. Exactly. Let's see if they unintentionally, intentionally pitch around her, or vice versa, intentionally, unintentionally work around her. One and one. No, nope, caught the inside corner. 0 oh and two. Okay, guess not. <laughs> <laughs> Answers that. Strike three on three pitches, they take care of her. Two down. Can we talk about that setup? I mean, the fact that she comes inside, like you're talking perfectly on the corner inside twice because it sets up this outside pitch. Because you know, Michaela Enfield, look at her front foot. She has to be able to clear those hips, knowing are they coming in my kitchen again? No, they're not. They go away for strike three. A beautiful job by the freshman in ACOC to be able to get her out. Well, and I love the fact that they, they didn't walk her, you know, with the base open. I mean, because a lot of, you know, you look at the numbers. That's a fair ball. One run is in. They're trying to score two, and out at the plate is Harding for the third out of the inning. Are they going to ar try and argue obstruction here? with the home plate umpire after Kerr came in to score. Harding out at home. They have two challenges and they decide not to use one. And the third run is in for Florida State. Good job by Taylor Tuck to get the ball, make the tag, get out of the inning. Back in the softball play.
Welcome back to NCAA Softball Women's College World Series presented by Capital One here with Oklahoma State coach Kenny Gajewski. And it's a weird game, you know, delay to start, then the delay in the middle of the game. How have you asked your kids to kind of reset mentally right now? We're just keeping them normal. I mean, the, the most important thing is just let these guys kind of be who they are. And, and uh, I think we're fine. I We had a little unfortunate play there, but I think they're in a good spot. They're trained for this stuff. We live here, so we know what this is, is all about. So we just got to keep plugging away. You talk about the unfortunate spot. Kylie Naomi gets the great hit and yeah. then the mistake on second. What happened there? I just think she's trying to be aggressive, make some things happen. The ball's wet. We told our kids the ball's wet, so go. And uh, they just made a nice play. So just credit them and credit Kylie for having a great at bat and making a great adjustment. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Thank you, Holly. 3-0 Florida State. They grab another run in the bottom of the third, and here is why tonight is important. The winner, well, you got a much better chance to keep in your championship hopes alive. 90% of the teams that have won the World Series in the last 40 years, they've been game one winners. Yeah, and you said that's uh, four over the last um, 40, that's good math, 40 uh, years. Oh, four, and, four times right. a team has lost, lost. And, and won, that's it. And so it was Florida State and also yeah. Oklahoma recently, right? 18, uh, Florida 21. State, 18, and, yeah. and then Oklahoma over Florida State yep. in 21. It will be interesting now that this new format yes. is in place numbers. to see if those numbers you know, shift yeah. a little bit. Well, the last two years, it was always a rarity to play both semifinal games. You know, the team out of the loser's bracket has to win twice. That's happened now the last two years. Well, so things are definitely changing. Yeah, and it's it, it, an expanded uh, format. So it gives pitchers a little bit more recovery time, teams a little bit more recovery time, especially when you have you know, elements that come into play, potentially like tonight. Thursday winners used to come right back and play Friday, Friday and then have Saturday off. Now. You, if you keep winning, you keep getting days off yeah. to get to the championship series. Which I think is smart. You should be rewarded for winning. 0-2 to Michaela Four. Wark. 4-5 and 6 coming up. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of firsts. There's only two teams that have returned from last year, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. That's the fewest in 10 years, so there's been a lot of turnover. It's the 18th season of the championship series, and it will get underway Wednesday at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Will it include Florida State again for the third time in five years? Will Oklahoma State be able to break through? The Big 12 had three of the final four last year with Texas and OU. And it's only the third time, guys, in 40 years without either UCLA, Arizona, or Florida, which speaks to just wow. how good those programs have been for yep. a long, long time. Yep. That was the big shocker in the regionals. The number two overall seed bounced, went 0-2 UCLA. Really helped open up a path for Utah to host that super. And that was a great series for San Diego State. Right, what they did. Terrific season for the Aztecs. Inside the bag. Work reached on an error in the second inning. The Pokes had two on base and then went 0 for 2 risp. Sander Cox still just so precise on that inner half. I, I mean, this is the best I've absolutely seen her yeah. throw. Mm -hmm. You know, just with her locates. 
And it shows that's how important being able to pinpoint your location is. Muffley moves to her right, slings it over to first, one down. For those of you expecting to be watching Utah and Washington, we had uh, a couple of rain and weather delays tonight, over an hour each, so that game uh, has been postponed until tomorrow. And the Utes and the Huskies will open up their World Series action at some point. We'll get the time to you. It may depend on just when this one reaches its conclusion. The loser of this one would face the winner of the uh, loser of that one tomorrow night as Caitlin Carwile gets the base hit. It's interesting with Caitlin Carwile too because her back foot is already turned towards the pitcher and it helps when a pitcher is trying to get inside on your hands. You're going to see that back foot already be opened up. Her hips are kind of starting to get cleared. So all she's got to do, you see right there, her back foot facing the pitcher and she's just got to get her hands. We have not seen Oklahoma State be able to get to the inside pitch until Carwile right there. Breach base safely streak now to 21 straight games for Caitlin. Here's Morgan Wynn who walked her first time up. Ball inside and low. So after giving up no hits first time through the order, Sandercock has given up two hits so far through five through the second time through the order. Over the season, second time through the order, batters are hitting about 85 points higher second time through the lineup. Usually that number waits till third time through the yeah. lineup. Yeah, well, it drops back down actually for her the third time. <laughs> How about that? She gets better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, because she has so many tools, right? So it just depends. She's got more, you know, tools, pitches to, to pull out at different times in the game. And that's really what elite pitchers do. They yeah. typically, as they pitch more and more in their career, become more professional Olympic level pitchers. They have now three, four different pitchers to throw, pitches to throw. Skills all honed in the old pitcher's barn out behind her house. Remember the story from her younger days back in McLean, Virginia. Her dad, you know, due to the inclement weather that you can get uh, in the offseason, built the barn for her so she could pitch year round. You could live in that barn. Oh, that was, was a beautiful. beautiful. You say barn, and it was like a <laughs> palace. <laughs> the pitcher's palace. Yes. <laughs> Flaherty to Muffley for one, over to first, and it gets away from Leonard. The throw was offline. They do get the lead runner, two down. Well, this is why Katherine Sandercock has been so effective this evening. Look at the movement on this pitch. Inside drop, bam, inside drop for the second strikeout. Inside drop again and again. Look at the rotation. Look at the way this ball is tumbling over the top. That late sharp movement is all because it's a four seam rotation going over the top. It gets about three feet in front of home plate and just dives off the table. That is elite level movement. Talon Edwards infield pop up for the first time through. Great to be picking up uh, the microphone there. Ron Burkhart, who is uh, Helping out the pitcher and the catcher and the batter. Let him know the positioning of his calls. Outside. Two and oh. Helen Edwards, one of the few that they haven't come inside to. She's got incredibly quick hands. Elite bat to ball skills. And that's the adjustment you have to make against Kat Sandecock is you gotta be more about your hands. Oh, she comes right back in there. 2-0, try to stay away. But 
a lot of times you almost have to take your, not your legs out of it, but you really have to think about just getting your hands to that pitch. Not a lot of body. Yeah, once you identify that pitch is coming inside, you have to just almost accelerate and just be quick, turn quicker. Speaking of turn quicker, yeah, <laughs> don't go in there twice. <laughs> I was like, they don't really challenge her inside. They got her to swing and miss once. They go right back to the same spot. And that's where Edwards can be so good. As uh, Kenny Gajewski was telling Holly, we had some pretty heavy rain here before the restart, so grass could be a little slick in the outfield. The softball could be a little slick. Not like that, however. Side retired, one stranded. Holly's got Lonnie Alameda when we come back. Got it. Welcome back to the Women's College World Series here with Florida State coach Lonnie Alameda. And, you know, we're just talking about the weird weather, and it's yeah. always something here, it seems like. Yeah. How did you try to get your kids to get ready to get out here? Because Katherine Sandercock seems like she hasn't missed a beat. Yeah, she's doing a great job. I think that goes to her being a veteran. She's been in these situations a lot. And we all chose an outdoor sport, so we got to deal with the weather <laughs> at times. And I think after you get a full season under your belt, you know what this is like. But something about us in Oklahoma State late night games, you know? <laughs> I know. It feels normal, right? Yeah. Um, watching Sandra Cock, I am just fascinated by her craft. This yeah. this is a kid who has perfected her craft, and we see it yeah. from the breaths to the movement. How are yeah. you seeing her really shine? Yeah, I mean, it's been um, like probably last month or so. She's really stepped into a role, and I know we talked about trying to manage her all season so she could be the best at this point in the season if we were lucky enough to get here. And I'm really proud of her ability to stay in a routine. Um, but she's also very smart, and so, you know, I trust that she can shake pitches and do what she wants to do because she knows how she wants to try to beat hitters. And that's something that, you know, she's got trust in her ability to do that, which is really cool. Beautiful. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Holly. And for Kat Sandercock and the Seminoles, the 3-0 lead as we move to the bottom of the fourth. Opening round action, double elimination format here at the Women's College World Series. The three-seed Knowles and the six-seed Cowgirls. And it's Mac Leonard to get things going. Six, seven, and eight coming up. Mac popped up to the first baseman her first time up. And her first look at uh, Kyra Acock after the pitching change to start the third inning after the hour 46 minute weather delay. And Leonard smacks one right back up the middle. And that's gotta feel good. That's a huge exhale. 
for Mac Leonard, only her second hit, 20 at bats in the postseason. <laughs> you see the big smile over there on first base because you know it. She's been hitting 0-5-3 in the postseason, and this one just a nice job hitting it back up the middle. That's the best way to get you get you going back right. Pinch ro uh, runner here is Autumn Belvi. Leonard can re-enter and return to first base. And that'll bring up Hallie Waycaser. Seminoles have had a base runner in each of the first four innings here tonight. Two runs in the first. They scored another one in the third. <laughs> Mac Leonard getting relieved the pinch runner here as your whole team knows it too. It's like, we got you. Uh -huh. Feels so good, especially this time of year because you feel it, you want to help. Runner goes, the throw down, and it skids out into center at a runner in scoring position. This is a Florida State team that loves to steal bases, and they can run. It's a good jump, throw a little bit in the dirt, so hard for Kylie Naomi to pick that. It's the 127th steal of the year. And they have the most of uh, anybody in this NCAA tournament. Oh. Well, and this is where it's such a weapon because you don't have to bunt to move the runner into scoring position. Yes, you just yes. take the base. You're not giving up anything to get that 60 feet. And when you can do that, it just is a game changer. And you could still go to the bunt and get her to third. I mean, yeah. that's the beauty. Hit it to the right side. Yep. It just opens up offensively what you can do. That is the fourth walk of the game for Cowgirl pitchers. On two of those four, as you mentioned earlier, Beth, have come in to score. So here's Katie Dack, who was uh, one of those walkers back in the second. Strike. Katie's got some home run power, double digits on the season, including one in the NCAA tournament. Some activity out in the bullpen. That's Ivy Rosenberry, who has just 14 appearances on the season, seven of those in relief. Dak right back to the pitcher, who fires over to first. Acock gets the out. One down, it does advance the runners. Stolen base, a walk, a productive out. All of a sudden you're in this prime position with runners at second and third. This is where, if you look at situational hitting, this is where batting averages typically climb well above 500. Far better batting average than, than with the bases loaded. Oh, 
Buffley dropping down the bunt, the slide at home, and in safe. As Josie Muffley scores Belvi on the squeeze play. Look at the location of this pitch. You want to talk about execution of a squeeze bunt? Being able to get your barrel to this pitch. It's coming right at her shin. And not only is she to get her barrel, she deadens it enough. I mean, a beautiful job. Oklahoma State had no choice. I mean, the glove flip doesn't matter with the speed of Belvi coming in at home. And that probably needs to be a bare hand and flip. Well, it's, she's, she's got her hand behind her. She's got no chance either yeah. way. I mean, that Josie Muffley, I know her numbers aren't there, but this is why she's in the lineup. Absolutely. I know the defense, but oh my goodness. Yeah, that was pretty amazing for the location of that pitch. <laughs> that 12, 12th squeeze of the season. The bat control for Muffley, that's her fourth of the year. Mudge opposite. Back it goes and gone. Kaylee Mudge with just her fifth home run of the season. Scores three more. Kaylee Mudge loves Oklahoma City. <laughs> Breakout year two years ago when Florida State was here. When the lights are bright, she just knows how to step up. Lead off spot. Kaylee Mudge comes in with a 354 batting average. More for average than for power, but she says, hey, you give me a pitch on the outer half, I'm gonna let it travel, and I'm gonna take you deep oppo. And she does just that, a three-run shot to put Florida State up now and in control by seven runs. Four-run inning for the Knowles, and still just the one out. Three of the four walks issued by Oklahoma State have now come in to score. And the biggest blast yet, Kaylee Mudge. A three-run shot after Michaela Edenfield had a two-run blast earlier. Janai Kerr grounds out, two down. He nailed it, Smitty. <laughs> Oklahoma City is like her coming out party every year. <laughs> it is. And she's always, I mean, she's had great numbers, so it's not like this is a surprise to right. do well, but the power. The biggest bat of the season for her. She's not a power hitter. This place brings the power, though. <laughs> it's the velocity we're seeing with Sander Cock. It's the punch from Kaylee Mudge. Two for three now on the night for Mudge. Harding skies that out to right. Side retired. Four runs in the fourth for Florida State. Their second home run of the night. Kaylee Mudge, the fifth of the season, takes the first pitch she sees from Kyra Aycock. Takes it out of here. Look at the smile. Putting Florida State up, seven zip.
Oh, did the, were they even? Who moving? hits the home run for Tennessee? Both of them. Yeah. Opening round action today at Oklahoma City and Tennessee powered their way past Alabama. Couple of home runs, Riley West, Jamison Brockenbro going deep. And a 10-5 win over Alabama. And then Oklahoma, their 49th consecutive win to improve to 57 and one on the season. Jordy Ball, 11 strikeouts at a five hit shutout. Jada Coleman with a two run single. So those two teams have advanced to the winner's bracket Saturday night. Excuse me, Saturday afternoon on ABC at 3 Eastern. Alabama Stanford will be in a knockout game tomorrow night on ESPN. And Washington and Utah, their game has been pushed back to tomorrow. And then for Florida State tonight, all nine starters have reached base. They only had three home runs in their first six games of this NCAA tournament. They've hit two tonight. And they have scored in three of the four oh, innings. Five. And can't Sandercott continues to hum along here. 7-0 Knowles to the top of the fifth. After that big four-run fourth inning. Substitution we've seen quite often this year for the Seminoles. Bethany Keene will come on to play first base. Mac Leonard will re-enter the game as the DP. Kat Sandercock, 26 and three. That is more wins than any of the other pitchers that are here at the World Series. She has not lost a game since Oklahoma State beat her in March and is trying to get to 16 and 0 in her last 21 starts since that. She's been impressive. Outside. Just dialed in. Throws every pitch with intent. There's a purpose to it. Yeah, confidence too. I mean, anytime you see a pitcher want to come and tack hitters inside, can't say it enough. It just tells you the confidence they have in their pitch, their movement, and their location. Yeah. Facing 8 9 1 here in the batting order. Ball three. It's a conversation we hear often from coaches around the country. You know, this is one more year next year of the COVID classes, but Kat Sandercock is one of those fifth year players. And, you know, some fifth years can get rid of all the distractions and they just are lights out. Others, you know, you got a lot going on after five years in college and their numbers have dipped. They, yep. they are ready to get on with their lives. It's been a mixed bag. Yeah, yeah I think it, it is because you come into college and you have these, you know, predetermined notions of where you're going to be at a certain point in your life and then all of a sudden you're you're back playing and are, yeah are you invested or are you not it's uh you either have to be you know just all in and committed that's when you're going to get your best version of yourself and we've seen that with with sandra you love the experience but you're dealing with young women who may be five years apart in age so uh, chemistry is always an important issue and an important consideration she gets the ground out of taylor tuck one down let's send it down to holly well, Catherine Sandercock is very aware of the age difference and that gap. She said, when I came in as a freshman, my head was spinning and I thought I knew everything and I didn't. <laughs> she said, so now as a senior, I've actually been really trying to help the freshmen. I, I want them to know they don't know everything because sometimes you come in and you've been coached a certain way and you need to be open. You need to be humble. You need to be open to trying different things. She said, so when they ask, I help. I try to give them my knowledge. And uh, that's been a five-year process for, process for her. But I love that she said, I thought I knew everything as a freshman, and I didn't. That's how we feel about Beth sometimes. Oh. Sometimes. Oh. sometimes. Staying young at heart. <laughs> I am the aforementioned Beth Bowens, along with Michelle Smith, Jessica Mendoza, our Olympic gold medalist, and our Hall of Fame reporter, Holly oh, Rowe, down on the field.
Here's Megan Bloodworth, the transfer from Alabama in the nine spot in the lineup. 0 for 1 tonight. Had a well struck ball. Opposite field lined out to Waycaser and right. And she cracks another good one. That'll find the grass. And that'll pass the bat to the top of the order. Third time around for Sandra Cock versus Rachel Becker, the two All-Americans. Post strikeouts yeah. to Becker have been inside. One swinging, one looking. Let's see if Becker she slides off she the plate a little bit. <laughs> that front foot a little more open. We saw the bracket uh, just a few moments ago, gang. Tomorrow we know one of the elimination matchups. Well, and the anticipation, I think, for softball fans worldwide that Montana Fouts will probably get a call yeah. from Patrick Murphy in what might be the final start of her brilliant career or an opportunity to extend it for Alabama. And will it be uh, Elena Vauder? Or do they go back to the freshman Nyjah Kennedy okay. for Stanford tomorrow night. But uh, Montana Fouts over 100 wins and 1,000 strikeouts in her career. A perfect game here a couple years ago at the World Series. Playing through the pain of a leg injury. It's one of the biggest stories to come out of Supers. Mm -hmm. That's the emotion wow. for that whole team from that win. And then we also, gang, know one of the winner's bracket matchups, Oklahoma and Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Two phenomenal pitching staffs, yeah. two outstanding lineups at the plate. I think a lot of folks thought maybe Kiki Malloy and uh, Jada Coleman or Tiari Jennings should have been finalists yeah. for National Player of the Year honors. Becker drops it down, and Sandra Cox struggled to get it out of her glove. And a couple on board, giving a little new life to the Cowgirls here. It's just poise, experience, reading the defense, knowing that she can lay this down. Sandra Cox, a little bit of a bobble, and that's all it takes. Becker runs very well. Sandercock is a really good defensive fielding pitcher, helps herself out a lot, but that little bit of a loss of the grip. I'm surprised she didn't throw it away when she mm -hmm. struggled to get it out and threw it off her opposite foot. I thought that was going to end up in right field. Oh, well, they're going to score that a hit for Rachel Becker. Pitchers don't get errors, Beth, you know this. <laughs> Bring up Cheyenne Factor. Grounded to second and then walked. Career off speed from Sander Cock. Definitely caught Cheyenne off guard. And that's what you see now. They get third time through the order. Different mix of pitches. Factor out to center. Kerr is there. Unable to advance the runner two down. So now on the night for the Cowgirls, 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. This is their first chance since back in the second inning. Sandercock just gets better when the position and the, the situational pitching. 
has to be better. I mean, when you look, really look at her shadow zones or where she attacks the zone, I mean, she is all over. You cannot sit on one half of the plate and in one location low. You've got to be looking low and out, up and out, up and in, low and in. I mean, it's it's tough. You, you really have to be good at hitting the pitch that comes. Here's Kylie Naomi. Too high. This is a big out right here for Florida State because they can score a run in the bottom half of the inning and end this early and still a chance to get the good night sleep that both of these teams had anticipated when their scheduled start was at six o'clock tonight local time. And of course for the loser of this game you're gonna have to come back and play again tomorrow night. And Kerr is right there. Sander Cock able to work out of trouble. 7 0 Florida State. Can they end it early when we come back? The NCAA Women's College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Swing of Michaela Edenfield. She went yard. Back in the first, a two run home run to start the scoring for Florida State. They have since tacked on five more. And she leads off the bottom of the fifth, knowing that if they add one more run, it's a run rule victory. And they can close this thing out. That's what Oklahoma State will try and deny. With uh, Kyra Acock back out on the circle, but she'll be throwing to a new catcher, Audrey Schneidmiller, the sophomore out of Burleson, Texas, now behind the plate. The home run ball for Michaela was off the starter, Kelly Maxwell, not off of Acock. Kyra struck her out looking back in the third. Outside high. Once again, this will be the final game of the night. The last opening round matchup, Washington and Utah, due to our weather delays this evening, has been pushed back to tomorrow. Too high again. Take a look back at the home run swing of Michaela Edenfield. And you watch the green arrow. That's her hand path. The yellow is the barrel path. And just a great job in understanding this pitch is going to be inside. And her hands be able to get her barrel to this ball. It got out quick, high, hard, all of it. She knew it was out. Head and eyes right there on the ball. Head, that was beautiful. I was like, oh my gosh. It's so easy for your head to fly open or fly. And she was totally down and locked. Locked in on wow. it. Picture that perfect. Cleared the bleachers out there in center. It's cool. You know, she leads Division One in pitches per plate appearance. She leads Division One in walk rate. I mean, she understands her zone and the pitches that she can drive and hit hard. Strike. And she'll take. She'll take and understand if that's on a pitch that I can drive, I have no business swinging on it until I get two strikes. Well, and you have to be a confident two strike hitter. And a lot of people are. There's a lot of hitters that don't like to get to two strikes because, you know, yeah. they feel like they're afraid of striking out. I think that's also another quality of Oklahoma, why they're so good. They're a great two strike hitting team. Oh, gets the swing and miss and a strikeout for Acock, one down. Acock is just going to get right on the inside corner, elevated. It's like a little bit of a screwball coming out of the hand of the freshman. Acock just getting right underneath those hands. And as pretty as her head was down on that home run, her head was flying on that last one, which again, easy to do when that pitch is so far inside. And, yep. Well, so she is now the both strikeout victims of Kyra. Here's Devin Flaherty. Struck out the first, reached on an error in the third that got a run in. 
Two in the first, one in the third, and then a four-run fourth inning powered by the Kaylee Mudge three-run shot. Strike. The winner will move into the uh, winner's bracket matchup with either Washington or Utah on Saturday night. Loser plays the loser of that game tomorrow night. Trying to avoid the dreaded two in BBQ. which in today's fast pace world has already been shortened to two and Q. <laughs> we don't need the BB. Not anymore. No more. Okay. <laughs> Translation, you lose twice and you just start cooking out for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Three one pitch <laughs> and Flaherty draws the walk. And she will trot down to first to save all her strength to prepare to steal second. <laughs> well, that is one of Devin's specialties. She's 30 for 31 on the season. And she now represents the winning run. Mac Leonard hoping that single back in the fourth is a slump buster for her. Flirty will stay at first. Chops it to first base. Fair ball and the out recorded two down. And the game winner now in the scoring position. That'll bring up Hallie Waycaser, a pop up and a walk. Scored a run in the fourth. sure what uh, is going on. I wonder if they're questioning whether or not it was a fair ball. Is there a I'll challenge? Know. All right, so Florida State challenging whether it's a fair ball. You get two challenges, even if you win, you don't get more, but also the umpires can use their discretion in late game situations. Remember, it's where the ball is. It's hard to tell. Yeah, I mean, that's almost like that. Foul. Yeah, that last angle looked like she caught it outside the line. Ruling on the field is fair ball, so they need physical, visual evidence to change it. Oh. <laughs> Came down behind the base runner. They have the... Uh, Ruling on the field is upheld. Fair ball. Yeah, we have a video review booth right here in house. And the ruling is upheld, fair ball. So two down with Flaherty at second base.
Way case around the season nearly hitting 400 with runners in scoring position. If she could get Flaherty home, they went on a run rule. First pitch swing and fouls it off. Three home runs, 34 runs batted in for Halley this year. Well, we've seen a bunch of arms up for both sides. That's Emma Wilson. Everybody's warm. Everybody's ready. Heading out to the pen. Okay. Well, I think it's good. Get used to the environment, everything, you know, just all the feels. Ground to right side, and that will not get the run in. So now a decision for the Knowles. Do they bring Kat Sandercock out again or make a pitching change? We'll find out next. Day and deep into the night here in Oklahoma City opening round coverage. You see Tennessee and Oklahoma were both winners earlier. They are in the ABC game winners bracket Saturday afternoon at 3 Eastern. Alabama Stanford tomorrow night on ESPN win or go home. And that Washington Utah game now scheduled for Friday at 1 Eastern on ESPN 2. So the opening round will actually carry over into tomorrow afternoon. The winner of that one plays the winner of this one. Catherine Sandercock, her day apparently done. Pulled to start the sixth inning. And Mac Leonard comes in to pitch for Florida State to face four, five, and six in the batting order. And so here is the first pitching change for Florida State, a team that used seven different arms during the season. Interesting, quite often it's McKenna Reed, the freshman coming yeah. in in this situation. 
But Mac Leonard here in the postseason has actually thrown more innings than McKenna has. Yeah, 8.1 to McKenna's three innings. Beth? Strike. Which, love the strategy stuff. Love the what goes into the decisions from these coaches on who to use and in, uh, in what particular situations. Is it senior versus freshman yeah. too? I mean, I, experience. I think it's more matchup. Reed is all rising up, and against Oklahoma State, they've been mostly trying to hammer the drop ball, and that is all Leonard. So to me, I view this more matchup oriented than based on pitch profile than anything. Well, I'm sure it goes back to all the analytical stuff, too. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, yeah, when we talked to Lonnie on Wednesday, her biggest thing was she wanted Leonard to have more innings throughout the season, but she just wasn't healthy. They needed her back, and she wasn't able to do it all. And she even alluded to, she's like, this is her time to shine. Yeah. We have saved her for a reason. Outside. It was a back issue during the season, finally healthy. Yeah, look at that. 73% of her outs are on the ground. It's because she is just heavy down, heavy the knees. Keeps the ball in the park. And gets a strikeout, one down. Leonard with this over the top four seam drop ball and it's it's elevated but it's well located and that's the point that is so important is that you can get away at times with a little on the plate if it's uh, you know at the right height if you're in on the corner and really threading the needle you can be a little elevated so you can get away with those things you just can't miss up, up and, and over on in the break. right exactly yeah. so you know it's the double miss is where you I get think yourself that's great trouble. I think that's a good spot to miss <laughs> of course hit her <laughs> <laughs> max third appearance of this postseason so three for her four for cat four for Reed and a couple for Ali Dubois, Allison Royalty also has thrown a couple of innings. So five different pitchers used already in the NCAA tournament. Popped it up. Bethany Keene, two down. Let's send it down to Holly. Lonnie Alameda of Florida State told us that her team has really turned the corner the last two weeks, that they've just put this all-in mindset. And, you know, she does so many different interesting things throughout the course of the season, but one of them that I really thought was interesting was Tell the Truth Tuesdays. Every Tuesday they have a meeting and they talk to each other about, hey, I could have done this better, I should be doing this better. And it's a moment to be accountable to each other. They did one here before they got to the World Series. And they were very honest on the things that they want to do. What will make us successful here? So tell the truth Tuesday, really driving them through this point of the season for them to be peaking at the right moment. It's just been the last two weeks that it's all come together. Yeah, they, um, they really had to keep their head down throughout a lot of this season because Lonnie Alameda, at one point, the schedule had 20 ranked opponents. 19 of them were on the road. Yeah, and they came through that, ended up uh, actually playing 24 ranked opponents, went 18 and six. And so they are tested mentally and physically, and they are three outs away from a win in the opening round. Thank you for your commitment to responsible drinking. 
Seven nothing, Florida State with the lead over Oklahoma State. Fueled by a pair of home runs tonight, Michaela Edenfield and Kaylee Mudge going deep. Edenfield two run shot, Mudge for three. And we move to the bottom of the sixth inning. Florida State will take another round of swings and then try and end it in the top of the seventh. These two teams have uh, sat out a couple of delays, an hour and 14 minutes weather delay before the first pitch. And then in the third inning, an hour 46 minute delay due to some inclement weather. Bethany Keene, her first swing since coming on as a defensive replacement. Eight, nine, and then the top. Three Seminoles that drew walks tonight all came on to score. Not only have they played big ball, they've played small ball tonight. Josie Muffley in the on-deck circle, a squeeze play to drive in a run. It's kind of been the Florida State MO, any means necessary. Mm -hmm. They can score a lot of different ways. Wow. It was perfect that it was a squeeze followed by the, the home run shot because that's exactly kind of their season. Although I would say maybe a double would have been like the perfect, <laughs> yeah. Jeez, 120 doubles on the season, I mean, that's a lot. That's like two a game, right? Yeah, 57, 58, almost 59 two, home runs two now games. to 120. Oh, Keen smacks that right back up the middle. Well, as Muffley comes up, let's revisit uh, the expertise in handling this tough pitch. Well, she's got to be late, too. That's the thing with a squeeze. You've got to be sneaky with it. You're not showing for a very long time. And watch her just get to this. It would have hit her shin. I mean, that that is like, I mean, pull this video and show every young kid when you're talking about bat to ball, being able to execute a squeeze and understand how to do it. And get it to stay fair yeah. and not be too hard. Yeah, it's impressive. What you got, Holly? Well, if there's someone at the World Series you trust with your life to get something done, it is Josie Muffley because she is actually training with the Tallahassee Fire Department. She goes on a ride along almost every single day. She's taking her EMT class right now, and she does a ride along with Department 132 in Tallahassee. She's been in a lot of life or death situations. She said it's been traumatic at times, but she's learned a lot. Just foul, Holly. And, and she is just someone that puts herself at risk, takes risk, knows how to do things right, but you absolutely trust this young lady. She's been such a stalwart for Florida, soft, Florida State softball, and it's really cool that her next career is going to be in the fire department. Already planning for, and of course, uh, the fire department, the guys uh, uh, bringing the truck out to a lot of the softball games, parked outside the fence. They've become huge softball fans at Florida State.
Kyra Aycock uh, up in the count here, 0-2. And a slow roller, Naomi at short. She'll go the short way to get the first out. That'll bring up Kaylee Mudge. This is what she did in the fourth. The first pitch she saw, drove it out opposite field. Great look. I love the up cam taking the batter's box. So you could see what it looked like from Kaylee Mudge's point of view, and it looked pretty, pretty dang cool. Her fifth home run of the season. Just so pretty. I mean, when you look at her stature, you know, you you think you have to have a lot of strength to hit the ball opposite field. I think it's more timing and just, you know, barreling it, the ball up perfectly. And that last home run from her, that, that was like picture perfect on just the way she caught that. Yep. All right, second inning in a row now that uh, they've got some speed on the bases. Amaya Ross over at first, and once again, a run rule opportunity here in the bottom of the sixth for FSU. Strike. Mudge with one down, back to the top of the lineup. Nice little numbers for Kaylee. 429 with eight runs batted in now in the tournament. Strike. Oh, and two again. Just to update uh, folks on what you were talking about, Smitty, and uh, Mudge taking over OKC. Her career now at the World Series, 16 for 31. Mm. That's, uh, can I, that's, over, 500. that's over 500. <laughs> <laughs> the throw down to second, and that scoots all the way through. And Ross to third. They went for the strike them out, throw them out, and they got the first part. And now Ross, 60 feet away from winning this one. Pitch on the inner half. The throw comes down by Schneidmeyer. And uh, I love the way that Ross is sliding into second base, but presence watching. of mind yep. watching. Yes, knows where the ball is, sees it. The second it's in the outfield, she's, the pop-up slide is on, and she's immediately taking that momentum to third. Janai Kerr walked and scored in the third inning. 0 for 2 tonight. Inside. Now we saw Mac Leonard get a much needed hit earlier for Florida State. Can Kerr get it cranked up again in the postseason? Been quiet thus far after making a lot of noise during the regular season for Florida State. And oh. will she leg it out? Safe at first, and Ross comes in to score for the Seminoles. And the run rule win for Florida State. Will there be a challenge here? And the umpires can take a look at it as well now that we're into the sixth inning. Yeah, you have to. I mean, you got two challenges. Game on the line. It's a close play at first base. Yeah. <laughs> so will it end the game or end the inning? The call here is safe at first, game over. If they change it, it's the third out. Oh, and they won't change it. No. So Florida State is going to walk this off for a win and move on to the winner's bracket with an 8-0 victory. Tell you what, though, that's a heck of a play by Rachel Becker just to get to this ball and make it a play at first. Call is upheld to Florida State with a walk off eight to nothing after getting through a couple of weather delays of over an hour pregame and in game. And after losing the opening round matchup, the last four times they were here, they break through to finally get one.
So Oklahoma State will have to come back and play tomorrow night, win or go home. Florida State gets the day off. They'll be back in action Saturday night. Don't forget our final opening round game will be tomorrow afternoon, 1 Eastern on ESPN2 with the 7 seed Washington and the 15 seed Utah. So it's time now for our Capital One rewarding performance, and it's Katherine Sandercock. Sandercock was just outstanding, working the edges, really getting great movement, late and sharp, lower half of the zone. She just challenged Oklahoma State on the inner half. Just a great, great outing. And she's with Holly. Well, Catherine, a lot of zeros up on that scoreboard, a shutout for you and your team. How are you really starting to deal in the circle despite the delays and interruptions tonight? Yeah, just focusing one pitch at a time like we have all season and then just relying on my defense a lot. Um, I think that, you know, we've had a season where we faced rain delays and adversity before, and it's just so we can be prepared for these moments. You are so specific with your routine. I see you take the breath, the way you put the ball in the glove. How have you found your kind of mindfulness routine to succeed here? Um, yeah, I think just through practice and experience and what feels right, but I think uh, it's important not to get too caught up in it. Just make sure that you feel good, you're eyeing up your defense and then eyeing up Michaela behind the plate and then just thinking execute one pitch. It's been a while since your team won on opening day. What does this mean to you guys moving forward to gain some momentum day one? Yeah, I'm super proud of the team. I mean, we came out attacking from pitch one today. Um, and then through the rain delay, through all the adversity, like we just stayed in it, stayed in it. We were able to put up a crooked number. And I'm just so proud of the team, able to come out and win this first game and just excited for the rest of the week. I'm just really proud of us. And I think that we're ready to take on whatever comes our way. All right, how about we see you in a winner's bracket game on Saturday? <laughs> Thank you so much, Holly. <laughs> Yeah, you got to go back to 2002, Holly, in fact, since they won on opening day. They had lost five straight times here in Oklahoma City. Don't forget Utah, Washington, tomorrow at 1 Eastern on ESPN2. Then winner go home doubleheader tomorrow night here in Oklahoma City. We will see you tomorrow.